All right. Thank you for joining us. And let's all have a great show. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm Mark Ostrich. I'm a filmmaker based out of Laguna Beach, California. And I've had the honor and privilege uh, to make a short documentary film with the American Association of Sleep Apnea uh, with Adam Amder, his family, uh, about their story um, dealing with sleep apnea. And it's called Like Father, Like Daughter. We're going to watch it now. And then when we come back, we're going to speak with uh, Adam, Mia, and Justine. And we're going to have a conversation about the experience and what it's like living with sleep apnea and ways to cure it uh, moving forward. You want to correct them? Sleep apnea has always been a thing since I was really young when I got diagnosed. It's always been a thing that I've lived with. The main reason for Mia's sleep apnea diagnosis is that uh, she has a very similar facial structure to my husband. That's why uh, sleep apnea can run in families. Eleven years ago, when I was first diagnosed, and I was what they called batshit crazy. You know, my, my Jewish mother was telling my wife, "He's nuts. Get get away. Leave him. Take my granddaughter and go." Sleep apnea is a syndrome, and it affects people in a lot of different places. Some people it's the upper airways. Some people it's in the in the, in the mouth area. Some people it's in their, their their neck and their circumference. There's a whole host of reasons why people have sleep breathing disorders. The good news is, is that once they get you relaxed. Once they get you relaxed, you don't really know anything else is going on. Right. So, <laughs> okay. Out of office. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go ahead and leave that. Let me take a look, okay? My husband and I have been trying to <laughs> mitigate her uh, in the future of having more complications or having to use a CPAP machine as, as she grows older. For me, getting out of bed was is a big metric in my day. Taking a shower was a big metric in my day. I was bedridden 10 years ago. The doctor gave me the IV. I was out in like five minutes. The procedure that Mia had is very uh, targeted towards uh, teenagers and young kids because the bone in the roof of your mouth, that suture, uh, is not solidified. Good. Don't do that. <laughs> and then I woke up and all I can remember is that I wanted Asian food. It's pretty routine, so um, she'll be fine. Do you mean you feel me trying to walk too? It feels good. Came huh? out of the matrix. Came out of the matrix. She's out of the matrix. <laughs> so this little device is a 20-minute outpatient procedure for a child, and that she theoretically, we might be able to say she's cured when we do a 90-day <laughs> uh, sleep study in a lab. When he came home with the expander, he looked really happy. It looked like it was easier for him to breathe. He wasn't cranky in the morning. Yeah, I'm pretty grateful for the expander. And so what the expander is doing is it's increasing her nasal volume so she can breathe easier through her nose. Which is then expanding and actually creating a gap between your teeth and opening up your nasal airway. But it's not just doing it here, it's doing it all the way back through your skull. You don't really want to breathe through your mouth. Your mouth is for eating and talking and your nose is for breathing.
When I first got the expander, even at the very beginning, I could notice that I was breathing better. And mm -hmm. as my allergy seasons came around, I felt that I could breathe easier in the day and during the night. I'm sure that every parent wants to give their child relief from a particular condition or something that they have. And if there's something that you can do to get them off of a CPAP, that you try that. That is every parent's goal is to just have, you know, a healthy, active kid that's doing everything that everybody else is doing. And that's where she is right now. If your child's happier, you know, mom and dad are happier. Because of the treatments my husband is, is using, our life has, has, has taken a turn for, for the better. Now I can go to her track meets, I can go to her piano recitals and be part of her life. We have a bright future ahead, my family and I. Mia is doing great. She's in sixth grade. She's, you know, loves school, is being active in sports. And, you know, and my husband and I are doing great. We're just doing some of the things that, that we love to together. Uh, physically, I'm playing tennis now. I was bedridden 10 years ago. So sleep apnea has always been a thing for me, but once I get this expander out, it's gonna be a thing of the past. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. <laughs> Excellent. Well, wow. thank you. Yeah. Um, once again, we are live right now on YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope on Twitter, streaming around the world. And we are uh, with the subjects of the film, Mia, Adam, and Justine. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hi, Mark. And anyone who's uh, been joining us late, um, I'll tell our producer who's producing this live video, Toby, uh, that we'll probably, we'll screen this at the very end of the film. We'll, we'll play it one more time on our way out. So people uh, that are joining us or coming in a little late, they could get a chance to see the live premiere uh, once again um, when we exit the show. So guys, uh, that was shot um, in March. Uh, part of it was shot in March of 2008. Some of it was shot earlier than that. Um, how is life uh, different, changed? Where are you guys at with the expanders? Um, how is life treating you guys right now? You want to well, uh, well, I would say that, you know, life, well, if we leave the COVID aspect and the pandemic aside and just focus on sleep apnea, um, everything has been, has been good and been status quo, as, as you saw in the end of the film, that... Um, Mia has, uh, has not been using her CPAP machine for several months. School's just started. Uh, so we're getting back into that routine of waking up early and getting to bed a little bit on the earlier side out of the summer routine. Um, but everything's been going well. Uh, Adam has been, you know, stable with his pressure, uh, hasn't ha had to make any um, major adjustments since, since everything's going on. We've been, we've been doing pretty good. Um, one of the things that's probably going to be upcoming uh, for Mia is that uh, we'd like to do her, her doctors and her team would like to do um, a sleep study to see how things are going now that she has had this variety of uh, treatments and interventions. And so probably within the next couple of months, we'll be doing an at-home sleep study, bringing COVID back into the picture. Um, you know, uh, uh, How long right has now. it been since the expander's been out? Do you remember, Mia? June, June. We got it out in June. Oh, oh look at me. I have it in my mouth. <laughs> you had one in your mouth, too. You've had yours out absolutely. longer, though. Yeah. Well, so, so I, I think we should back up before we jump into what we need to do now going forward. 
you know, this has been an amazing journey for us as a family, for me as a father and as a husband, uh, and for Justine and, and for Mia, you know, it's almost nine years since Mia started uh, down her road, actually longer. It's, it's, it's um, 10 years for Mia's journey, uh, but nine years since we moved to Florida. And the only reason we moved to Florida is I, one, put on my mask first, my CPAP mask at the time, and it helped me make sort of better decisions about what to do for myself. And then eventually that of my daughter. So I know we just started covering this actual part of the intervention and this part of our treatment, my treatment, and Mia's treatment in the last year during before COVID and during COVID and after. Uh, but this has been a 10-year treatment journey that's been a multi-intervention, multi-discipline, multi-dynamic target for the both of us. We and saw that they- photo. We saw that photo of Mia when she was eight. Um, and when she had a CPAP a device, Mia, can you tell us what you remember from being young with what it was like um, going through some of those treatments? I remember that sometimes we'd go to California and we would visit some of my old friends. We would also like go and get a sleep study and check in with doctors. I remember that when I was younger. But uh, have you become like an expert in sleep? Uh, like what, what would happen at, at sleepaway camp? I remember you had a funny story about that. Uh, when I went to sleepaway camp when I was younger, I brought my CPAP machine and so I, it was pretty great because my bed was also the one by the outlet. And <laughs> so I, I, I think what, what's amazing is that Mia went to sleepaway camp before uh, the COVID era and actually took her CPAP machine with her without stigma and, you know, slept and was able to go away every summer uh, by herself. But what's amazing is she's now going to be almost 13 at the end of this year. Uh, Justine, if you if you could mute your mic, we're hearing a lot of feedback. Thank you. So, uh, you know, what's amazing is that we're now uh, 10 years into our journey, and, and now Mia's now off the mask as a result of this last intervention that, that we just watched the video on. Um, and for me, you know, I've been able to reduce my pressure, uh, and even during the time, it's amazing because we're, you know, we're coming up on uh, – this is Mia's first time on the Sleep Apnea Speaker Series – our Everyday Tuesday, 3 o'clock Eastern show at sleepapnea.org. But we're coming up on our sixth annual sleep timber, and without fail, we don't have one hurricane again, but we've had two. And normally the barometric pressure would have driven me nuts these last couple of weeks as it changes. And because of this surgery, even that type of dealing with that facial pain, that those sinus pressure and breathing and being able to breathe with my nose now, regardless of how that affects my CPAP, therapy is it's night and day. I mean, just the cervical change that I got in my neck from how I can rebreathe because I'm not just breathing with the top of my neck. I can now access my diaphragm. Uh, I, I say for me, the negative during COVID is that we're, we're sedentary and we're not moving around as much. Uh, and that's something we still need to work on. You're moving uh, your mouth a lot though still. So that's good. Yeah, my mouth talking, you just doesn't, doesn't you stop. Know. <laughs> <laughs> what well, Mia so tell I want to hear from Mia about like how it's been for you do you have the same type of um relief that your dad is having with breathing and barometric pressure and all that stuff do you do you get sinus headaches or do they have they gone away no everything I feel like everything works better I can go to sleep a lot easier because I used to have trouble falling asleep with or without the mask and I feel like I'm getting a good night's sleep for school and stuff. That's great. You wake up refreshed and you could breathe easy and all that good stuff. Well, she's kind of fibbing a little bit, Mark, because before this call, you know. It, it, oh, it was, boy. It, 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 it was, it was, it was uh, you know, scratching her nails around here just to get her out of bed. So now she's looking down like uh, depressed. But, you know, for the first day of seventh grade, how many hours of sleep did you get last night? Less than eight? Ooh. Like, not good. We got to work on that sleep hygiene. Yeah. But, um, but you know, uh, Mia, it seemed like when we were filming um, that this treatment has really been effective because you do track and field. Uh, and you may not be doing it right now, but are you still going out for runs? And h- how is that working out? And how, how does the <laughs> combination of 
um, exercise and good sleep and diet, all that stuff help you kind of have a just kind of normal, normal life like every other kid your age? Um, well, I used to not be able to go over and have sleepovers at my friend's house. And I can't <laughs> now because of COVID. But when I first got it, the extender out of my mouth, I slept great. I went over to my friend's house and it was a really fun experience. And you were able to have a sleepover with, without a CPAP machine? Mm-hmm. It was great. That's great. It, it, Adam and Justine, it, is there a stigma associated with kids and the CPAP machine? And, and ha have you ever experienced that or have you heard about that happening? Let's back up. I think the real stigma is is that this is a therapy for the haves and the have-nots, the burden and the barrier just to getting a child tested, let alone prescribed, and to have all these different interventions that we've done since she was two. Remember, Mia had her tonsils and adenoids taken out when she was two, uh, and she'd stop breathing 27 times an hour back then. Anytime over one for a child is, is not healthy. Uh, just by taking out her tonsils and adenoids, it went down to 12, and then we, we did – orthodontic expanders that a lot of people are doing now, which is great because it expands this, this upper lip down. But this last procedure that, that, that Stacy Quo, Dr. Stacy Quo out at Stanford and, and under the guidance of Dr. Christian Gimeno, who passed away last year, uh, that, that Dr. Casey Lee, who's, who's, you know, the best hands in, in the world as far as we're concerned, uh, they've, they've evolved what the, what, where, what we can do and with children because their bones are still malleable and this, this upper palate hasn't solidified. They can manipulate that and literally ex expand your septum and, and get rid of that deviation, but not just on the front of your face. You got to think about your nose going all the way back to the back of your skull over your spine. And yeah. that, that alone, I know me is getting so much more. I, I can watch your sleep. It's quiet at night. I mean, we're joking around about she didn't get enough sleep for seventh grade, but that's because everybody's life is turned around upside down because of this COVID and circadian rhythm. Yes. And, and, and just to remind everybody, we are live right now. If you do have questions on any of the platforms, please put them in your chat and they will pop up in our stream and we will uh, we will get to them. So, Mia, did you ever ever feel like a science experiment when you were growing up with all these uh, different treatments and interventions? I asked for a specific reason. <laughs> um, the first time I got a sleep test, they like blew all the little wires to you. And I was not having it. They, they give you <laughs> a button either. to press like when you want like the nurse or attendant to come in. I think they really wanted me to leave that place as soon as possible. <laughs> well, but, you know, I don't know if you, if your dad ever told you, but you know, I, I've had uh, three open heart surgeries. One of them I was four, one 16 and one of 27. So, you know, everyone I think has some type of issue they have to kind of overcome in their lives, no matter what. And I, I, you know, it's always important to look on the, on the bright side uh, for anybody that's out there that's going through, through problems. You know, there are, there are going to be people out there that have it far worse and then people ha have it, have it better. So, you know, I think, you know, any issues that, that uh, people have, if, if you look at them, you know, objectively, probably people would probably pick their, their own issues uh, because they're familiar with them. And, and uh, it's good to have a perspective and, and, and such a loving family that that's looking out, out for you all the time. And so that's really important. Well, I, I, I would like but, to say that, you know, I'm mean, true a lot in your youth. I mean, you might not want to have braces just specifically for uh, cosmetic reasons, but you have them when you're younger. You know, there are things that when you do them when you're younger, uh, you know, uh, uh, set you up for easier going in your adulthood life and, you know, and, and that. So I kind of feel that that's what we've been been working on with Mia, that, um, you know, it was a little bit of orthodontics. We had to have two sleeve studies at different points. And, you know, I think everyone that is part of our community and, and out there will attest that in lab sleep studies with all the wires and so forth are not that comfortable. Two-year-olds don't like it. 20-year-olds, 80-year-olds, nobody uh, likes those things. And hopefully we'll see, you know, some uh, some progress in, in the ability. It, it, it's funny, in light of all the COVID, Justine, it was actually easier to get a mask on me at three than it was my at then 75-year-old mother. 
Uh, and now, in light of what's going on now, you're seeing everybody, you know, with the excuses and the stigma. And it's like, listen, this is, you know, just for public health standpoint, not because everyone's wearing CPAP masks. But are, are you seeing are, are you seeing um, elderly people get diagnosed at this late age and starting to wear a CPAP machine for the first yes. time? Yes, yes, that does that does happen. Um, you know, as you we've talked about this before, but you know, as you age, your muscle tissue mu muscle tissue, excuse me, use loses its elasticity. Uh, you know, it happens all over our body, and um, and it happens, you know, in the mechanisms that that you're breathing with. So it's not uncommon, you know, for individuals, women and men, to you know start snoring and so forth when they're older, and and having apnea events while they sleep. And Adam is right that, you know, it was easier to work with Mia to wear a uh, CPAP mask uh, when she was four than it was to work with his mom, who, I don't know, maybe at that time was in late 60s, 70s, something like that. Um, you know, because obviously when you're older and, and you know, and, and your dolly, little vanity leaves a mark, red, you know, uncomfortable, but, you know, with Mia, it was, you know, as a parent, and we all know this, you know, there are things that your kids have to have to do and you tr uh, in regards to medical treatments or, 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 or things like that, that you just, you know, you just support them on and you mm -hmm. you offer cupcakes and M&Ms and, and, and so whatever that's a bribe. it is that you can do. Bribery. <laughs> Bribery. You, can okay. do. Uh, you can't prove that. <laughs> Were there kickbacks involved with that? Like, hey, well, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a package of M&Ms. I just need three back. Yeah, right, right. That's, that's a good segue, Mark. So there, there's a lot of misconception about our family and our role and, and our, our role with sleep apnea. We, we've never set out to be the, the poster family for this, anything but. Uh, but, you know, I've, as I went through a thousand and one more minefields and obstacles and barriers and figured out my life story, you know, I didn't know I'd be around to now see my daughter who's almost 13 and going to be Bob Mitzvah at the end of this year. Uh, I didn't think I'd even be here uh, 10 years ago, uh, 13 years ago. You know, I was I was first diagnosed when she was six months old by my best friend straight out of med school, uh, who, thank God, you know, changed changed all of our lives and changed the, tra the trajectory. Well, that being said, once I figured out for myself and then we helped Mia, Justine and I have spent the last seven years volunteering for this Patient Advocacy Association as my daughter yawns because she's I, heard it all before and she listened to it all. Well, day. I think she didn't get enough sleep last night. Oh, it's obvious. So, the, <laughs> so, so who snores louder in that family? Who's the loudest snorer? Nobody snores. Nobody snores here. No. no. My mother Everybody... snores because she leaks through her CPAP therapy. Yeah. Okay. Now, the type of um, CPAP that Mia had in the film, is was that a that's a BiPAP, so it just goes over the nose? What was she that? She had an auto pap machine with a nasal mask. Uh, I'm on a BiPAP therapy, which is one pressure on the way in fix and a different pressure on the way out. One pressure for inspiration, one for expiration. Justine is on an auto pap for her upper airway resistance syndrome. But I, I, I wanted to say something, and, and this is important. We volunteer our time. We do this because, you know, we felt like we've made it out in spite of the system and we found the secret to life that, my daughter now started having interventions at two years old, is now 13 and is off a mask. This new innovation, this technology that they've been doing for the last couple of years under the guidance of, of the then Christian Gimeno's uh, multidisciplinary team and now Stacey Quo and Casey Lee and a lot of other young doctors out there. Um, the truth of the matter is, is we could be preventing a lot of kids from ever even getting to, on a mask. Sleep apnea is the end of the road. Sleep health and sleep prevention uh, is where this all starts. And I know Mia's looking off and, you know, she heard, she hears this all day long and I'm proud of her for, you know, volunteering and, and, and for letting us come up on, uh, and tell our story. And, 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 but at the end of the day is you're never going to see a sick child. She's a healthy child. You're seeing her yawning today because it was her first day of school and she's got to get back to getting on a regular sleep schedule for school because now there's no longer a commute. But you mitigated those long-term issues that, that could arise from being oxygen deprived and holding that breath, holding that breath at night is, can lead to long-term, um, long-term effects such as, uh, cognitive disappear. Um, Dr. Cognitive Dr. Issues. I know, asked us 10 years ago and, and I asked him and, you know, I said, if this was your daughter, this is your granddaughter, what would you do? He said, mm -hmm. consoles and admins without question. We saw within 24 hours, you were eating pizza and ready to go home. 
Okay, you didn't even have a concept of pain in your throat because you're only two years old. Well, I love uh, that Mia's, you know, kind of in a way, uh, a real pioneer in this area with with you know being able to um, maybe talk to other kids her age who you know during sleepovers if, if she hears kids snoring she could talk to them and help maybe get them you know and talk to the parents and get them on the right track. Right? Would you say that's fair? Have you ever talked to kids, Mia, about about snoring or sleep at camp or anything like that? Yeah, at camp, there's uh, we have some people who talk in their sleep, which it's it's kind of annoying. I can't really deal with it that much. Um, but let's not work, let's not talk about other people. The real issue is is Mark. The sad thing is the sleepovers aren't going to be happening. So, you know, part of the reason why we're telling our stories is that the mommies and the grandmothers at home that know that when they see their child snoring or holding their breath or sleeping in child clothes, even though we're all locked at home and confined for the, for the long term right now, uh, there's things that we can do to improve our sleep, yep. uh, improve our sleep health, which will improve our mental health. But Mia, has a wealth of, but Mia has a wealth of knowledge more than any most kids, um, and, and hopefully you'll be able to pay that forward once we get out of this uh, pandemic. Yeah, I'd like I'd like also to say we uh, we had a video uh, with the NYU health disparities team and one of the doctors there, Dr. Um, Jean Louis, was talking about uh, children with apnea and you know that they're having trouble waking up for school, they're having trouble paying attention in school, they're um, you know getting diagnosed and and having hyperactivity uh, issues. And, and, you know, he even said that that relates back to, to sleep. You have to start to, you know, take a look at, at what is happening with kids and, uh, and sleep. I mean, the stage that, you know, we're moving in to, with Mia right now and talking about school starting and her being a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, waking up early today and so forth. You know, she's also becoming a teenager and we're all very aware that your sleep cycle changes when you're a teenager. We witnessed it True. firsthand this summer where she wanted to stay up later and, you know, and uh, sleep in more during the day. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's normal, you know? And yeah. so it's now we're, you know, as, as with most families across the U S whether mm -hmm. you're online or in person or whatever it is that you're doing for school, that it, um, that, you know, you're getting back into the groove of it because more than likely your kid, right. if they're a teenager, wanted to get into the into that. Mode. Sleep so. can be a little cyclical, right? Where summertime you stay up a little later and yeah. and that's normal. You can sleep in a little bit. We are getting a question um, that's a very interesting question. I don't know if we could put it up. Uh, it's from Grace Young. Um, yeah. She said uh, she's from Facebook, uh, coming in from Facebook, says, what are your thoughts on the theory that human sleep apnea comes from our marine mammal ancestors? For example, elephant seals use apnea to sleep in the midwater column. Is there any so, merit so, to that? So, so I'm not a scientist, and, and I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm a layman, and what we know is what we've learned based on lived experience. And this is actually a great question for a segue for, for one of the things that we want to really highlight this sleep timber, our sixth year with now not one but two hurricanes to kick us off because – we, we could handle one hurricane. They wanted to see if we could handle two. We're actually going to do, as Mia keeps yawning for the fourth time, because now, now she's a serial yawner, um, we're going to do the apple bite challenge. So you wanna, yeah, but what, 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 what about the question? Is there any merit about, do, do you have any, you know, that I guess the uh, reason I'm animals, answer, animals I'm do gonna, hold their breath underwater, uh, you know? So the reason I want I was wanted to do the apple bite challenges, Mark, is is that, that helps me explain why her anthropology question is is a is part right and part not the whole truth. Yes, animals have different ways of sleeping. Dolphins or porpoises sleep with different sides of their brains, uh, but apnea, as far as we know, Justine, your your, your mic. Apnea, as far as we know, uh, is 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 something that is evolved as we've evolved as humans and our voice voice box and in the, in the, our speech has, 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 has developed and got more sophisticated. Uh, there's just not enough room in the airway for us to breathe and to eat and talk. The nose is for breathing, the mouth is for eating and talking. So one day, we, we as a family were playing around, <gasps> as me and Yon's again, with biting into an apple and Justine, mom, uh, 
couldn't believe the size of our bites. Now, you're going to see both of our bites now, but this is after multiple interventions. Yeah, I, let me just interject here. I, I like to tell that story a little bit. So they were eating apples, the two of them. They took bites, and then they went off to do something, and they set them on the table, and I almost fell out of my chair because I, I knew whose apple was, you know, who set it down to the right, to the left. And Mia at, you know, the age of uh, eight, when she had already had some of these interventions, her bite out of the apple was bigger than Adam's bite. You could tell that her mouth was bigger than Adam's already at the age of, uh, you know, eight years old. Let me just interject and real fast. You're, what you're saying, just, I want to be clear. At the age of eight, Mia had a wider bite than Adam, who is a full-grown adult. Correct. That's Correct. amazing. And, and, I, and I would I, not even forty yet. And I would like, and I would also like to point out that um, you know, look at those I, apples; they look delicious. While I've seen, while I've seen, you know, the the film we showed in the beginning several times today, when I sat, down, you know, watched it with the rest of the audience, there was that one point where Doctor Lee showed. Uh, Adam's expander in his mouth, and then Mia's in hers. And let me tell you, if you were to put those side by side, if anyone, you know, Adam, it, it was so tiny. His his bite is so tiny, and that is a precipice for his sleep his sleep breathing issues. His breathing issues. That's the problem. And, and then so, therefore, Mia's, who's an heirdom. I'm sorry exactly. about your your tiny mouth, Adam. <laughs> so. Uh, this is the this is the apple bite challenge. So you can see here that they have two regular yep. size slices of now, apples. Now is that a Fuji apple or is that a what kind of apple honey is that? Honeycrisp. It's a Honeycrisp. A, a Honeycrisp. Yeah. It's a Honeycrisp, but only in okay. California. Do now we put that up to the camera out. just like that. Put it a little closer so we could see. Yeah. You could try this at home. You at, slice Mia's bite apples. is wider still. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That, and that shows you that her interventions that we're doing We've already doubled her airway just based on this. I like how Mia also like checked your check, like a soccer checked you like almost out of the frame. So I think that was amazing. Just showing that, just showing that was really such a visual representation of, of how that, I mean, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It really and, is. And how is and that apple? Is, is the honey crisp deliver the sweet crisp? Uh... Well, that's mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, let, 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 can we have new apple slices? Can we try this again? Yes. <laughs> I, but I think it's really. To me. I think it's right now I feel like you're on the Food Network. <laughs> I think it's really... Okay. We'll do one more time just to, just to make sure there's no trickery here. I think it's very important to point out most people don't realize that um, Adam's bite is actually getting smaller as we speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is my job. So apple, we, we, we want to invite people to, 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 to do the apple bite challenge this year for sleep timber, hashtag sleep timber and hashtag ABC apple bite challenge. Yeah. So I think you take a picture with your family or your and show us your bites. Uh, and just remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And you know, you know, if we get our good sleep, we're going to have a strong immune system, and that's going to keep people from uh, winding up with uh, having uh, having bad cases of this COVID. If God forbid they're exposed to it, and be safe, everybody. We we would yeah. definitely love to see everybody's uh, sleep sleep uh challenge uh do do your apple bite challenge using the hashtag sleep timber hashtag sleep timber it's right there on the screen post your apple bite challenge uh either on uh instagram or you could do it on facebook or twitter and we will see it and we will post it and we would love to see uh your apple bite challenge and you can use a honey crisp of a, a <laughs> Fuji apple, uh, <laughs> Granny Smith. Granny, Granny Smith. Smith yep. Yeah, I, I like the Granny Smith apple. I like that sour. You look like sour. a Granny Smith type of guy, Mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, but but also that shirt, Fuji. That farmer shirt on. Yeah, you know, I want to accentuate my sunburn. So. <laughs> well, 
Well, now we know you've got enough vitamin D, so we're just making sure you're healthy out there. Yeah, great set. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, Mia, Adam, and Justine for sharing your stories. Um, I and, hope, Grace, I, I, I helped answer part of your question. I, I think the dental and the structural, from an anthro anthropology standpoint, is, is where this starts. Uh, there's muscular, there, there's all sorts of components, but... You know, uh, we're great. And Grace Young is actually an aquanaut who has uh, spent many, many hours and days and weeks actually living underwater in a pre in an Aquarius reef base. Um, and they actually were doing sleep studies inside the lab, I remember, uh, to see how people slept under under pressure. Wow. Um, so I'm, I'm, thank you for your question, Grace. I'm, and I'm glad you could join us. Yeah, that you know, we should we should do a follow up with her and uh, Dr. Grandner and some of the, the NASA sleep people and talk mm -hmm. about what sleep is like under pressure underwater, which I think as a, as a planet we're going to wind up <laughs> sooner than than mm -hmm. for. Uh, and we're also interested in on a, uh, what kind of apple is your favorite? I, Grace, I said is on t hashtag <laughs> Team Honeycrisp. So <laughs> we, we got that going. <laughs> What's yeah. your favorite? Granny Smith. Granny Smith. <laughs> I don't know. We used to live in Northern California, and there were some special apples we used to have. Uh, I have to think hard about this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and this this can work on. Um, I think apple is a great is a, is a great way to do it too. And we really would love to see your see your uh, apple bite yeah. challenge. Well, so, like I said, it's you know it's, we're not going back to school in the in the physical sense. This is Mia's first day of seventh grade. Uh, she's been on a ten year journey of sleep apnea. She's no longer on a CPAP mask. And, you know, uh, an apple away keeps a doctor away. It's going to keep our immune system strong. And to be quite honest, we want to pay respect to, you know, very soon uh, four years of our, our combined longitudinal sleep health uh, apple uh, mobile pilot research study will be uh, peer reviewed uh, and published by Nature. And yeah. we, we hope to continue asking these sleep health and these sleep apnea questions at sleepapnea.org. And during September, really focusing on all the health disparities and all, amongst all the comorbidities and all the and all the populations, because everyone sleeps cradle to grave, chronic to rare, and it's a moving target throughout our lifetimes. It's not it's dynamic. It's not yep. static. And there's one there's one last topic uh, I'd like to end on, and, and then mm -hmm. we could show the film uh, with pediatrics and sleep apnea. So many kids, I, I from what I understand are not diagnosed and, and kids that really do have sleep issues that start to, you know, present early, usually get misdiagnosed as hyper hyperactivity or attention deficit. Can you talk a little bit about that and have either, and I want to hear from uh, basically, you know, Adam and Mia, if you guys see that in your classmates or have had seen that in your classmates and what kind of advice do you give? And, and Let's talk about that and the disparity issue of not everyone is getting treated for this because of their socioeconomic background. So, and just like speak said, up, Mia. Yeah. Like I said, I have, I know people that sleep talk at camp. And then when I started going on to sleepovers, I started going to sleepovers. I noticed that, like, my friends would be snoring. Or it take them like hours to fall asleep, but so I think Mark just proved the point because he asked the question about hyperactivity and focus, and you're seeing you're on a little bit short sleep, so it's hard to stay on topic. I had the same problem. Um, uh, I'm not going to answer for you, but I'm going to say very clearly that we at SleepAtMe.org and as a patient community, uh, nobody should be getting a prescription for Adderall, Ritalin, any sort of chemical stimulant until a full workup has been done. And we see it rampant. And, you know, the reason that most kids show with hyperactivity and not excessive sleepiness or tiredness is that most kids still have their adrenals. Uh, so that when they're tired, just like that baby at five in the afternoon during that sundown, so in that witching hour, uh, they're bouncing off walls. So is that have a you seen that with your friends, hyperactivity with, with certain friends ever? Yeah, I, I have seen that. Um, some of them don't pay attention half the time. And other ones are really tired. And then later on, they get really... And where, where do you see the tired on them? How do you know they're tired? Um, they're probably 
won't talk that much. You're just sitting there. They got bags under their eyes. I think that's what, that's the reason I asked her that is because I'm looking at her eyes. You can see, I mean, Mia hasn't been off a mask for almost a year now, huh? And she doesn't have these black bags that I've inherited over the years from, from oxygen deprivation. Right. And, and I think, you know, we haven't done a 90 day post up full in lab study because of COVID uh, to get a full, to verify that what we think is going on is going on. But I know right now I can, I, I don't hear her if I go in there, if I see her sleeping, Maybe I'll catch I'll ca- catch her with her lips open and breathing through her mouth, uh, and then. But there's there's other things that we could be doing as well. Myofunctional therapy. Me is mm-hmm. almost 13 years old. She, you know, at a certain point, you got to be responsible for your for your own. Uh, what is that myofunctional therapy? Do you remember those exercises, Mia? Yeah. They were exercises for like. Your tongue that helped stretch out your mouth. Well, yeah. we, we, fixed, we fixed the bone, so now we got to retrain your muscles to breathe with your nose. Mm-hmm. So tongue gymnastics, tongue exercises is, is really mm-hmm. what they are. Mm-hmm. For your tongue, for your lips, uh, you know, to strengthen all the muscles in all of the different areas. Because when you are when you're relaxed, you know, I've been sitting here listening a little bit. If you think, if you check yourself, your uh, tongue is more than likely on the roof of your mouth. And, when and just there, before you check yourself, don't wreck yourself. And, <laughs> and when you do that, when your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, it helps to keep that that palate open and expanded. That's why, you know, there there's a concern with people that are consistently breathing through their mouth. You know, if you think about it, if you if you never have your mouth closed and your tongue isn't up there, everything grows and collapses on itself. And uh, makes it, you know, even harder to, to 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 breathe. So, you know, there are things that you need to do with all of those muscles to ensure proper facial growth. We uh, just had our um, our blog writer uh, Eugenia Brooks um, right it, August was uh, Breastfeeding Awareness Month. She wrote a great blog on how breastfeeding helps with continued growth. Um, and development of, uh, of babies' uh, uh, mouths and tongues and stuff. Uh, it's more focused on the growth of it. You know, that's, that's the big thing that, you know, we're trying to pay attention to. Um, the, a question just came in um, from Barry uh, from Facebook. Uh, he states that uh, me and my daughter and two-year-old granddaughter have all had tongue ties uh, inherited. I'm curious if they will inherit mine and if my wife sleep at and my wife sleep apnea. They have not been tested yet. Thanks everyone for your time. So, so, so Barry, your question is, I think, finally is starting to get at the root of this. What we need to do from a public health standpoint. Remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I don't pretend to be an epidemiologist. Uh, but I've learned a lot uh, from lived experience and from making it out on the other end. So my, my answer to you is this very much. We know that if we start identifying the kids with tongue tie uh, at birth, we can put a major dent just in the sudden infant death syndrome block of, 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 pay, of parents who, who lose babies to, to that. Uh, the, really the big difference between SIDS and pediatric sleep apnea is a, is a baby's ability to roll over after one and catch its own breath. Um, so to answer your question, we want to get it to the point where we can screen someone, saliva screen them, and know whether or not we should cut and trim their, their, their tongue tie, which is a 20-second procedure at birth, yeah. uh, which if you think about it and you're building a cornerstone of a house or anything, if that, if that cornerstone foundation brick is not, is not strong, you're building on top of that year after year. So we develop other issues as a result of that. So... I think for anybody that has any child that that's being in the senior, your mic is uh, and any child that that's um, got that's been recommended to go see a speech pathologist, you need to have a sleep workup. Anything to do with orthodontic, crowded teeth, high upper palate, uh, allergies, all that kind of stuff. These are all red flags and signs. For me, it was for business as a child. My brain wasn't getting oxygen, so my eyes were wandering. Most kids are going to see focus, attention deficit, uh, behavioral. Um, it, it can manifest differently. Bottom line is, you know, when Dr. Gimeno asked me after we had Mia's tonsils and adenoids added too, 
And at three, you were still, you know, you had some residual acne. And he asked me, he's like, you know, what are you going to do? I go, I'm more concerned about our brain fully developing than anything I could do by putting a, a CPAP mask on our face. So we weren't scared of CPAP. It changed. Right. It changed our lives. It helped. It 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 saved. It's my about life. the brain saving the brain, yeah. having the brain function. I, I think that's one of the reasons why we made this short documentary too. Is 100%. just as a kind of a way that families don't be afraid to do something if you see something with your kid. If you see your kids not sleeping properly, that's going to have a lot of other effects downstream. And so, don't be afraid to see something. Your your PD uh, primary care physician. And, or pediatrician is not really going to talk about sleep unless you bring it up. So if you're seeing something, please say something. Um, I, I want to take this time just to thank you guys uh, for, for everything you've done uh, in the sleep community and also to, to thank uh, you about what, what I've learned, you know, working with you guys over the last year. I've learned so much. And we take at our, we, our family, we take sleep so seriously. And uh, it doesn't matter what your background, color, creed, any of that stuff. If you see something, say something, whether it's your health or your family member's health, it's, it's really important to, to get that test and push for that, that test because, you know, we're, we're asleep, you know, a third of our lives and y y everyone deserves to have good sleep, not just a few hours of not good sleep. And, and, it's not, and it's not actually Mark. It's not only see something, say something. It's it goes back to the do not ask, do not tell. You know, when you when you go to your doctor, uh, if you if they don't ask you about sleep, you need to make sure that they're asking you about it, and not just how do you sleep, what kind of sleep, are you waking up a lot, are you in pain, are you are do you have problems going to sleep, whatever it may be. Now that's a burp, or what? That's part of your apnea from having long-term apnea, right? What is that's that? Part of, that's part of the reflux and, and indigestion with a hiatal hernia, and now just eating an apple, which is probably not organic and it's probably got some sort of pesticide on it, and oh boy. So that irritates my internal inflammation. So Mia, I Mia, you, you, Mia, you, you, didn't, you do like what's the deal with organic versus non-organic? You, you had an eye roll there, so I was just uh, curious if you had an opinion. <laughs> It was not an eye roll. Um. <laughs> You're on live TV, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I'll I'll let you guys go. I know you're enjoying your apples. Um, <laughs> we're gonna show we're gonna show uh, the, film one, the film one more time on our way out, and. Uh, We'll let you guys know that also that the film will premiere. You get to see it and download it on Facebook and YouTube, and that will be made as its own separate film available later today. And once again, hashtag Sleep Timber is coming up in just a week. Yes, I was just going to say, please join us. We have a wonderful set of speaker series going off every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. We're continuing uh, the, the series moving forward, covering all types of co-occurring conditions with uh, sleep apnea. It's going to be very informative. We have a lot of good experts that are joining us and patient panels. So it's going to be um, an exciting speaker series throughout uh, Sleep Timber. So we hope to see you. We hope to see you back. Same place, same time. So we, we managed not to put Mia to sleep. She's obviously hungry. We haven't been feeding her enough, so <laughs> eating her apples. <laughs> She's got, she's been, she's given me a lot of credit. She puts up with me and my no filter as a result of these 35 years of, of chronic sleep apnea. And Mark, most importantly, thank you to you, to Toby, to everyone at our team um, for helping us share this story and making sense out of it and connecting the dots um, because I am the non-reliable narrator and my brain's a little bit broken, but you know, helping figure out this story and this syndrome and figuring out these seven unmet needs to, to, to what our patients are dealing with is part of what we will be for the next year really starting to explore with our community and with our, our overlapping communities. Um, Thank you. So, so, all right. So Toby, why don't you take us out? Thank you everybody and enjoy uh, the film. Sleep apnea has always been a thing since I was really young when I got diagnosed. It's always been a thing that I've lived with. 
The main reason for Mia's sleep apnea diagnosis is that uh, she has a very similar facial structure to my husband. That's why uh, sleep apnea can run in families. Eleven years ago when I was first diagnosed and I was what they called batshit crazy, you know, my, my Jewish mother was telling my wife, he's nuts, get, get away, leave him, take my granddaughter and go. Sleep apnea is a syndrome and it affects people in a lot of different places. Some people see upper airways, some people it's in the, in the, in the mouth area, some people it's in their, their, their neck and their circumference. There's a whole host of reasons why people have sleep breathing disorders. The good news is, is that once they get you relaxed, once they get you relaxed, you don't really know anything else is going right. So, <laughs> okay, out of office. <laughs> All right, yeah, go ahead and do that. Let me take a look, okay? My husband and I have been trying to mitigate her uh, in the future of having more complications or having to use a CPAP machine as, as she grows older. For me, getting out of bed was, is a big metric in my day. Taking a shower was a big metric in my day. I was bedridden 10 years ago. The doctor gave me the IV. I was out in like five minutes. The procedure that Mia had is very uh, targeted towards uh, teenagers and young kids because the bone in the roof of your mouth, that suture, uh, is not solidified. Good. Don't do that. <laughs> and then I woke up and all I can remember is that I wanted Asian food. It's pretty routine, so um, she'll be fine. Do you to feel me trying to walk too? It feels good. Came huh? out of the matrix. Came out of the matrix. She's out of the matrix. <laughs> so this little device is a 20-minute outpatient procedure for a child, and that she theoretically, we might be able to say she's cured when we do a 90-day uh, sleep study in a lab. When he came home with the expander, he looked really happy. It looked like it was easier for him to breathe. He wasn't cranky in the morning. Yeah, I'm pretty grateful for the expander. And so what the expander is doing is it's increasing her nasal volume so she can breathe easier through her nose. Which is then expanding and actually creating a gap between your teeth and opening up your nasal airway. But it's not just doing it here, it's doing it all the way back through your skull. You don't really want to breathe through your mouth. Your mouth is for eating and talking and your nose is for breathing. When I first got the expander, even at the very beginning, I could notice that I was breathing better. And as my allergy seasons came around, I felt that I could breathe easier in the day and during the night. I'm sure that every parent wants to give their child relief from a particular condition or something that they have. And if there's something that you can do, to get them off of a CPAP, that you try that. That is every parent's goal is to just have, you know, a healthy, active kid that's doing everything that everybody else is doing. And that's where she is right now. If your child's happier, you know, mom and dad are happier. Because of the treatments my husband is, is using, our life has, has, has taken a turn for, for the better. Now I can go to her track meets, I can go to her piano recitals and be part of her life. We have a bright future ahead, my family and I. Mia is doing great, 
She's in sixth grade. She's, you know, loves school, is being active in sports. And, you know, and my husband and I are doing great. We're just doing some of the things that, that we love to together. Uh, physically, I'm playing tennis now. I was bedridden 10 years ago. So sleep apnea has always been a thing for me, but once I get this expander out, it's going to be a thing of the past. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 